Okay, so I am on this part of the experiment, uh, processing your data. Um, you download the free software. Um, I'm going to have to force the graph to zero on the y-axis. If I go and I look over here, I just loaded in the um, slow titration data. And the way you would do that is you'd come up here to um, this area. And if I click on that, it's going to give me this pull down menu and I would choose open and then from my file that I saved on my computer I sent you that in canvas I'm going to pick that one and open and there I've got that I, I need to be able to see zero here this is um, at two and I don't know where zero is so I'm going to go over here to this little icon down here Click on that and edit graph options. And um, under scaling, I'm going to choose always show zero. And I'm going to close that. Now I can see where zero is. Okay, and those were these instructions right here. Now I'm going to do this part uh, select the flat portion of the lower region of the curve. This is the weak acid buffer. And I'm going to click and drag over the data points on the graph. I want to get the flattest part. And the instructions say this is uh, about the middle two thirds. So this is the region that we're talking about. And see how it starts to, to curve up at the end here. And at the beginning, um, I would never trust that first point because that might be, I don't know, just kind of on principle, I'd never use that one. So I want to use some part in the middle here, and I definitely want to get a bunch of points. Um, so maybe like that. Exactly what you choose is not going to be huge. Everybody's going to be a little bit different. Um, and as long as that looks like straight, then you're OK. And so then the next thing it says to do um, is click Graph Tools, su select Apply Curve, choose Linear. So I'm going back down here again. This is actually kind of fun. Um, apply Curve Fit. Linear is the default. There's a pull down menu here, but I don't want any of those other things. I want Linear. And Apply. And so now we can see that it's done a linear regression line here, and it's given me the information for that. Um, it's telling me the x range, and for the equation, the slope is 0 0.1305, the intercept is 1.979, and R, R is 0.9994. That's how it tells me how linear it is. So the, the closer to one that is, the better. And then this is um, in the way. So I don't know why it won't let me put it over there, but it just doesn't seem to want to do that. So I'm going to push it out of the way for now. It says, um, try not to obstruct the graph. You can just move it up and down. Um, repeat this for both the middle. Oh, wrong pointer. Repeat this for both the middle, the equivalent zone, and the higher, stronger base regions of the graph. So I'm going to go back over here. I don't didn't mean to click there. So it's kind of curving here and so I want to go more in the middle of this. Maybe from here to here. Oh, about that. That looks okay. I'm going to select that and then I'm going to go back down to the corner here and apply curve fit. It says linear apply and there it's going to give me um, the information about that line and then I also want to get the equivalence zone now you want to get at least three points um, and I'm I think I'm gonna maybe go from from this point here up to this one See how that one more see how that works and um, oops I need to do that 
I'm going to click on that one and then, oops, now I've lost my mind. This is tricky because there's not, you know, you're not going very far. There we go. And again, I'm going to go over here to this icon, apply curve fit, linear, there we go. Zone. So you you click on one place and hold the button down and drag. And so in the in the equivalence there it's it's tricky because it's such a narrow range. Nice face. And then I do want to be able to see these numbers, at least the important ones. I really don't care about the RMSE. I don't necessarily care about the R either, but I do need the slope and the intercept on there. Excuse me. <coughs> um, uh, to print the data table, you need to first save it as a CSV file. So go to View, Icon, and select the Table option. So I'm going to go back over here, and that's Zoom. That's not what I want. So this, this funny box of boxes is the View button. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. Um, and I want to see Table. So this is going to show all of the actual numbers that were graphed there. Um, in the file drop-down menu, select Export, choose CSV, select 12.3 for the decimal format, and click Export. So again, to the view icon. That's this guy here. No, nope, not that one. Already drop down menu it says. Other options? Uh, maybe it's this guy over here. There it is. So it, it's this, this button up here where you um, deal with files. And so I'm going to go to export and CSV, and now it's got 12.3 or 12 comma 3, because in Europe they use commas instead of decimal points, but we want this one, export CSV. Um, and then you need to save it somewhere, right? So, no, not that one. I'm going to go and save it actually somewhere useful. File saved. Um, to print the graph, you need to first save it as an image file. So click the view icon. That's the boxy one up here. Um, and I'm going to choose one graph. And then in the drop down menu, again, I'm going to select export. And this time I want the graph image. And it's got kind of a nonsense name, but we'll just go with that. Put it in its place over here. Save. Okay. Um, so you need to print two graphs: the graph with the equation windows, 
and a graph without the equation windows. Um, my guess is that the one I saved has all the stuff on it. I'm going to go over there and look at it. That was this one. I'm going to click on it and is it going to open? Got too many screens going on here. It's opening behind something. Come on. Bring it over here. Come on. Okay. So that, that opened on my computer, the default was paint. It opened with paint. And so that's got all this, the markings on it. You need that. And you're going to need to print that. Um, actually, you don't need to print it on paper because you're going to be turning it in online. I would like it as a PDF, though. So, actually, it's, I don't want this full screen because I can't see behind the light. Well, let let me see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go up here to um, file, and I'm going to say print. And um, I have an Adobe PDF printer, which doesn't actually print anything. It just saves things as a PDF file. And if you don't have that, um, you, there are free ones that you can get. Oh, and look, there's, this one would probably work too. Microsoft Print to PDF. That one I think is just on my computer. But so I'm going to tell it to print like that. And then it's going to want a place to save that. Oh, good grief. This crazy file structure we've got going on here. I'm going to call this um, graph. Oof, not that. Graph with lines. And so it saved it. Dang it. What am I even looking at now? paints open. Close that one. I'm so lost. There. So this is the PDF version. And that'll be much better for um, uploading with your report. So then we also need one without all the lines on it. I accidentally do, did stuff on there. I don't know what happened. Uh, don't see. So I'm back at my graphical analysis here. And I'm going to click on these little boxes. Close. 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 I made them all disappear. So now I can go back up here and export as a graph image and save it somewhere useful and then when I bring that one up I can write on it 